Hi guys, we are back. Today I'm going to kind of talk about something that is a touchy topic for me just because it was, <sighs> looking back it was a hard thing for me having to acknowledge. I, uh, I kind of touched on it when I talked about parents and family about what happened when I moved out, but I, today I'm going to go into more detail about it just because with a lot of people I know they they have similar experiences, but they don't generally have people who have gone through it that are not their parents or their parents' friend. And it's one thing to hear it from them, but it's another thing to kind of hear it from someone who isn't as older as that. I don't know how to word that exactly, but I already talked about how like I moved out on bad terms when I was 18, and uh, I'm going to kind of talked about where that began and why and go a lot more in detail with it. So to start off, probably when I was 16 and a half, honestly, is when it started. I when I was 16 and a half, I I well, yeah, 16 and a half. I was dating uh, my third boyfriend, uh, he, at the time he was a really great guy, but it was one of those things that he was very possessive and very much of a not helping when it comes down to a strong personality. And my personality was very strong. I, I never had a curfew when I was in high school. It was pretty much a... As long as they knew where I was at, they were fine type scenario, but, uh, I kind of, <laughs> those years, I, I, I did some very foolish things. When I was in high school, I, I started dating him behind my parents' back, which was thing number one that was a very bad idea. If you have to hide it from your parents, that's a no-go. Like, uh, that's something that I've strongly believed in now, even, like, my parents told me growing it up, and I, I didn't fully grasp it, because I thought it was just a way to know what was going on and be able to keep track of me and control me, and it really wasn't. It was in the sense of, you have to hide something from the people who care about you most. Generally, it's because it's wrong, and you know it, you just don't be told. And that's what happened whenever I started dating him. I hid it from them for a while, and then they found out, and then they made us break up, and then I still got back together with him once I got my phone, and it was back and forth stuff, and then I broke up with him and got back with my ex. And that's kind of where the turning point hit with him, and that's when I kind of started changing. He was an amazing person. But his personality changed towards me when that happened. And a few months later, after I realized that my ex was not changed at all, I got back together with him. And it became this mentality of he broke me down mentally to make me feel like I could only depend on him. And that everyone else didn't understand and that I I could only rely on him. And it it was frustrating because like when you have someone do that at the time, you don't realize what's happening. You just think, oh, they're they're caring about me, they're trying to do what's best for me, and, and you don't realize that they're trying to seclude you to make it to where you can't figure out what's actually wrong with the relationship. And I became this angry person because everything he said pretty much came to pass. He told me that my parents tried to break us up again. They did. He told me that my parents would pretty much try to ban me, try to control me on that, and they did. But it wasn't for the reasons that he was saying. It, it was for their own good reasons. And I just became this angry person, this uncontrollable rage just kind of filled me just because I felt like I had no one that would understand or, or, 
or accept me other than him. Like he was the sole person. And it was hard because uh, at the time I didn't realize any of this. I, I just had this immense anger. And so when my parents tried to take away my phone, I became this person that I don't even recognize. Like I, I tried to go head to head with my dad, which he's probably one of the most intimidating people I've ever met if you get on his bad side. Now note, I'm his daughter, so I mean, I, I have a little bit of a leniency, but when it comes down to it, you don't cross that line. And there's always been that line. You do not cross. Well, whenever they tried to take the phone away, which was my lifeline to my boyfriend, I defied my father to the point which I was even scared of what he was going to do. Not in the sense of my physical, but being just the fact that I literally stood toe to toe with my dad and said no. And that's something that is pretty much unheard of in my family. And that should have been a warning sign to me that something was wrong, whether or not it was a relationship or with myself, there was something majorly wrong. And so it just kind of built from there. It, it, my dad, you could tell that like he was heartbroken and he was, it was, <laughs> My mom's first reaction was to pretty much ground me, ban me from things, make my life tight. But it was my father who was trying to keep the balance between us because he could tell what was going to happen probably, but he was trying to stop it. And it wasn't like my mom was doing anything wrong. It's, I probably will be the same way when I'm a mom. I, you're trying so desperately to protect someone from something that they have no idea what they're doing that you'll, you'll go to the extremes and become the bad guy in their eyes at that time to do that. And I mean, I've had to do that for some friends and it's a tough thing. You promise people, oh, I won't say anything, but when it comes down to their well-being, you'll go to the people who are responsible to tell them, and that's a trust that you broke, but for a good reason. And it, it's that you broke a trust, but you're trying to protect the person. And in the sense, that's pretty much what my family was doing, and my mom especially, just because she, uh, as much as I, I, I love to say I'm a lot like my father, I'm also a lot like my mother. My mom had dealt with a lot of things in her past that she didn't want me having to go through that eventually I did because of my own stupidity. And so when it came down to that, like, my father was trying to fight so hard. So, like, it became this point where... My parents were trying to like get my car and their name to try to get it to calm down and different things. And when they found out that, because uh, when I started working at the, the restaurant, and we're going to fast forward a year, so I was 17 and a half, I, I threatened to move out. Before I graduated, before any of that, I was a senior, I, I threatened to move out because I'd had it. Because they were trying to control me. They were... I had this so much rage. It was unbelievable. The only time I wasn't angry was when I was with my boyfriend. And that also, that was a hard thing too, because at that point he had decided that unless I gave myself physically to him, that it wasn't worth it to be with me. Well, when you're a 17 year old girl who thinks she's madly in love, you start getting freaked out. Even though that could completely cross the line of yours, you freak out. And that was another thing that was causing all my anger was just I had this boyfriend who I was so madly in love with and who I was going to marry and all this stuff. I even started writing my name with his last name, like all this bullshit. And all the while my parents could tell because at some one point my dad was like, if you're going to date this guy, I want to meet him and I want him here. So we had him at the house, and me and my mom were not allowed to be out there. He met my dad, and they talked for like an hour. To this day, I still have no idea what they talked about. But a month, uh, about three months later, uh, I uh, 
he tried to make me uh try to get me to sleep with him and I said no and he 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 just exploded. Which then just made me more angry because I was just like, What the heck, dude? You met my father, you you I've done everything for you. What do you want? And it just progressed and when I was working at the restaurant, I had a lot of people there being like, well, you're your own person. You should do whatever you want. Blah, blah, blah. And I mean, at the time, yeah, that's great. <laughs> All these 17 year olds thinking, yeah, I should be able to do whatever the fuck I want. Pardon the French words, but uh, it's pretty dang true. I had people tell me that. Like when I was started working there, I had people, I used to never cuss. Never. I was the person that would be like, what the freak? What the, what, what, all this BS and all that. Like I never cussed. And so I started working at the restaurant and I had people being like, oh, you're so childish. You don't cuss. You're almost an adult. You should cuss. Like, it's not a bad thing. And it, you don't realize what peer pressure really kind of is. It's not so much the people trying to shove it down your throat. It's the, you want to be this cool person and you want to fit into this group. And that was something that also added to my list of <laughs> grievances to the point where I started cussing just so that I could fit in. And the same with smoking cigarettes. I, I was so stressed because of everything going on that instead of just talking it out or praying, I started smoking. And then that also led to uh, me not being able to sleep. And my coworkers was being like, oh, we'll just have a shot of uh, vodka and that will help sleep. And that's what got me started on drinking. 17 years old, genius idea. And so, I at least had one coworker who was not smart enough and wise enough to tell me that I needed to stay in that house until I graduated. Well, then I was like, fine, I'll stay until I graduate and then I'm out of here. Well, I made the mistake of telling someone pretty much everything that had been going on that was a family friend that I'd known forever that was one of my sister's friends. And we had to sit down with my family trying to talk everything out. Well, this is one of those things that just goes to show things need to stay in the family. As much as your friends may want to help, it genuinely needs to stay in the family. Because when proceeded to happen when we had that meet was I got cornered and told that I was either going to tell my family, tell my parents what I'd been up to, what had been going through, the fact that I had been smoking weed, drinking, hanging out with people, doing things with people. It was one of those things where it was just bad. And I got pushed into a corner and I snapped. And it got put on the table in public in a bad time. And I personally snapped and I exploded because I was so angry. And because in my mind, this was my life. I had every right to be able to do whatever the heck I want. Well, <laughs> that happened and my parents were completely destroyed. They they had, no, they had no idea what was going on with their daughter and they didn't know what was going on to make this happen. So in their heads, they thought, where did we screw up? Well, fast forward a little bit further, after I graduated, uh, the October after I graduated, my family, uh, my grandfather passed away in October, the beginning of October, while my parents left to go to the funeral and I couldn't go because I had to work. Well, that just kind of hit me hard. I was so upset and that night after they left, my boyfriend came and sat in the driveway with me to help me not completely break down. And that was another thing that just was, looking back, it was great that I had someone, but it was the wrong person. Instead of like relying on my sister or my parents and talking to them or and just saying to work, hey, I need to go. I, instead, I didn't. And I opened myself up to even more of an attachment and feeling like I had to rely on him alone. So later on in that month, I the fights kept getting worse. I kept every little thing also before I forget, when I turned 18 and my parents found out that I was going to the lounge, they put a curfew on me. 
And I got so angry because I was like, why the heck? I've never had a curfew. Why did you just now, now that I'm 18, give me a curfew? Makes no sense. And looking back, like, I understand it. I still, that's one of those things that it's just, they did what they thought was best. Doesn't necessarily think mean that I agree, but they as parents made that choice. And that's all that matters. They were trying to do what was best for me. And so that also made it worse for my anger just because like I had so much anger in me that just kept fueling it in the flight. The fights kept fueling it to the point where, hey, Toby, come here, come here, come here, I'm trying to get my dog over here so that he'll stop barking because he's a little bark fest, yes you are, but after my grandfather passed away, I got into another fight with my mom, and I was so angry, I threw a pillow at the wall by her head, and whether or not it's a pillow, whether or not you actually hit them, it's still a threatening feeling. So I went to work that day, and then I came home, well, I got off work, and my mom was sitting in the parking lot. And she said, I want you to give me your house key. And she proceeded to tell me that she didn't trust me being alone in the house because she felt like I was going to destroy something and that she didn't feel safe with me being in the house by myself and that she wanted to be able to control that. Well, in my brilliant mind, I took that as pretty much a get out. When in reality, it was my own actions led to this. So it was, you can't live in someone's house and think that you can throw things around and have all these blow ups and think that they won't feel threatened and not want you to be in the house when you're alone. So that night I came home and she had a homeschool group meeting thing and I packed up my stuff while my dad sit on the bed. And he kept asking me if there was any way that we could talk about this. And I just said no. And I left. And I went to my aunt's. And I am thankful that my aunt took me in when I did that. I look back and I regret the fact that I... I moved out in that manner. I, I knew eventually I was going to move out of my own. I'm not one to stay in my parents' house and until I'm married and all that. But I moving out on that term was very dangerous and very bad idea for me. And it took me a good two years until, honestly, I read a notebook, a journal of mine, that was my thoughts and feelings of when I was dating my boyfriend at that time and during all those events. And I realized how I sounded. It was literally the sound of someone who feels like she literally only has one person. And no one else understands and no one else will understand. And it, it hit home. Because that whole time I couldn't figure out why I was so angry. But when you read that book and you read my own words, it's... He had completely mentally destroyed me. He broke me, a strong person, into believing that no one would love me, no one would be with me, no one would stay other than him, and that was only if I met his criteria. And if you put yourself in those shoes, you'll become pretty enraged with anything and everything. And it was a hard thing for me to have to acknowledge to my family and have to say, this is one of the reasons why. And it was tough. I I feel like when I since I moved out I, I that young, I grew up a lot faster. And people are always like, Oh, I wanna grow up fast, I wanna be older and I wanna be able to do stuff. You really don't. For this reason. I moved out of my parents' house, moved into my aunt's house, and then that was in October. The following March, I got my own apartment. And I was like, oh yeah, I got this. 
I got evicted the following December? December or January. The, the following December, I got evicted. Because I wasn't, even this, and this is with me having my best friend as my roommate. I got evicted because I was still so unstable and had the mentality of, I want to have fun. I want to do things. I don't like care about responsibilities that it got to the point where I got myself evicted. And luckily enough, I had amazing friends at the time and it, the situation was able to be fixed. But looking back, you have to come to grips with things of the fact of you aren't going to always realize what other people are telling you. Your parents are, are that, are, are pretty strong that way. They, they'll see things that you don't want to see. They'll see things ahead of what you realize because they may have lived through it or it just may be their wisdom. I mean, you, you grow up enough and you have enough stuff underneath your belt, you're bound to see things other people don't. And I mean, even at my 23 year age group, I still see things that people at even my age or even a year older don't see just because of what I've gone through. So, uh, I'll wrap this one up. That was pretty much the story of more in depth of what happened and a warning to anyone who is dealing with something like that or or having those fights with their parents you need to sit back and reevaluate why you're having such a strong hardship with your family if it's because they're restricting your freedom maybe you're not as mature as you think you are and not ready for it and if it's boyfriends, then maybe they can see something in him. Then yeah, you don't. I mean, I could have saved myself a lot of hardship. A lot. If I had listened to my parents the first time. But I didn't. Luckily enough, I was able to be smart and found an amazing guy in the years to follow that stands by me and builds me up and doesn't break me down. And that's always important. Your family will continuously build you up. Sometimes it feels like they have to break you down a little bit a few notches before they can build you up, but they always build you up and you don't want to take that for granted. So with that, I'm going to leave this one to the end. I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far and I hope this falls on ears that it needs to. It's an important one. I will talk to you guys later, and as always, have a wonderful day, and leave a like if you want to. Bye!